So today we're going to talk about the actual cost of living one month in Tokyo, Japan. From Tokyo, Japan, Midwest and the Far East. So in this video we're going to talk about exactly what it costs to live in Tokyo, Japan in July 2020. Now, before I get into the actual number, because there's a big number at the very end of this video, I want to talk about what kind of a family we are and why all these costs kind of exist. So, there are just four things that I want to get through to you first before we get into the costs and stuff that we... First thing you need to know about us is that we have a baby. We have a five-month-old baby. The second thing you need to know about us is that this baby and my wife were actually back in Ehime, which is about a 12-hour drive from Tokyo for the birth and for after the birth. It's very common in Japan for mothers to be to go back to their hometown to have the baby and then come back to wherever they're living after the baby has gone like, it's grown like a month or two. So there was a long time where they were away and that was actually up until May is when I was living on my own and then starting June this past month is when they came home. So there's a big switch that happened from me living alone to me living with my wife and my kid that took place in the month of June. Third thing you need to know about us is that for the month of June I actually took paternity leave. It is everyone's right actually in Japan to have to be able to go on paternity leave for I think up to one year. Uh, it's just nobody really takes it but I thought I would just step out there and just take I could have taken a year but I thought okay now I'll just do one month. I actually have a video that you guys can check out that kind of goes through the day in the life. You can see my son and my wife and kind of what we go through during the day uh, these days if you're interested. So that was another factor. Uh, you could maybe the expenses, food expenses, and utilities and everything are actually a little higher because I was home. And finally, the fourth thing is that we don't have a mortgage. We rent, and the place that we live in is a 2LDK, which means that we have a living dining room and a kitchen, and we have an extra room. And if I had to describe our spending habits to kind of give you an idea of like what kind of people, what person, I really wish we had like a third person you know, judge on this, but I would say we're actually really frugal. Yeah, I don't think we actually are now that I've gone through this a little while and I thought about it. I think frugality has to do with how much you spend versus how much you save. And I think for us, we spend more than we save and we need to really cut back. Uh, the only thing I can think of that we really don't spend a lot of money in is like clothing and stuff. So I don't really buy that much clothes. So maybe if you spend more money on clothes, then this amount would be higher per month than us. But honestly, okay, so that's something we need to really improve on. I mentioned that in my last video about tracking my expenses. We need to have a goal so that we can save up money towards that goal. We just don't have that. I don't know. How do you guys save? How, do you consider yourselves frugal? How can we be more frugal? I know there are plenty of like YouTube videos out there in the world about that, but I'd be interested in hearing from you since you're interested in this kind of stuff. Anyway. So just to give you an idea of how we actually tracked our spending for the past month, what I do when we go out and buy anything is that I keep our receipts and then I come home and I bring them back to this computer here and I just input them all manually onto the spreadsheet uh, that we made a few years ago. So I gave you four points of context earlier in the video about our living here. And I wanna break down, break this spending into six different factors of spending uh, habits for us, which is kind of a long name, I don't even, doesn't make any sense. Six factors to spending habits. Actually, before we get into that, I just want to take a moment to give a special thank you to my 3,527 subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. I hope, especially for you guys, that these are the kind, this kind of stuff that you want to learn about. If you have any questions or comments, put those in the comments below. I read them, I respond to them, and if I don't respond to them right away, it's usually because I'm looking up the right answer. Without further ado then, let's get back to the video. The first factor to our spending habits for this past month is homecoming. Second factor of spending is that we, if, if someone were to ask me where does, if everything was out, you can't, you have to buy the cheapest shit out there. You know, the cheapest camera, the cheapest couch. You have to live in the shittiest apartment. But there's one area that you could spend money on. Where would you spend money on? We would spend money on food. Like, not just any old eggs, but free range chicken eggs. Not just any old beef, but grass fed, grass fed beef. You know, organic kale, stuff like that. And that is reflected in our grocery expenses. The third factor of the spending is our baby life factor. So we spent a lot more on diapers this month than I've ever spent in the past. And another thing that that factor affected was uh, the amount of water that we spent this past month. Our water bill actually went up so much this past month that 
instead of giving getting a, a bill first, we actually got this notice, which was kind of funny because the, the person hand wrote said, hey, your water spending has gone up almost triple. What's wrong? Obviously something could happen where there could be a leak or something like that. That's a, that's an out, outcome of the baby life factor. Fourth factor to our spending is what I just call sporadic spending. So we sometimes we just, it, it's just impulse buying. I mean, we're not perfect when we go out, we just buy it. We see something that we like, we buy it. Um, and there were a few things that fell into this category. Like we, we bought a frame for our baby's footprints. We just did like a footprint and that frame was 4,000 yen. The fifth factor is just the regular daily stuff. So rent, utilities, that's, it all goes under there. So anything that didn't fall into the first five categories I put under my six factor other. And one of the things that goes under there is there's subscription to Premiere Pro, which I use to edit these videos which I think is like 25 bucks a month. And then 400 yen, which is like 350 for uh, Apple storage and then other reoccurring expenses. So like, I know we spend money to have a, basically like it's cartridge for uh, soft water for a shower head. That's other expenses. So those are six different factors that affected our spending for the past month. Plus I give you four points of context for the kind of lifestyle that we have here to compare it to your lifestyle of spending. So now let's get into that final amount, get to the actual total cost for the grand total for our expenditures for the month of June, 2020. But wait, there was one more thing. We actually bought a mattress this past month. It's something I've been waiting to do for a long time because when we moved to this new place, we actually had to get rid of our old bed and bed frame because it just wouldn't fit. And with the tatami room, I just decided that we would put a futon on the tatami, which you can actually check out in our day in the life video. You can see what that looks like. But that mattress, that one single futon mattress came out to 138,000 yen, which was a massive expense for the past. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the grand total for our expenditures for the month of June, 2020, Four hundred fifty thousand one hundred and thirty-seven yen. Obviously, minus the mattress, it's a little bit less than that. But what do you think? Is that a lot? Is that a little? Is that about what you expected? How is that different from your country? If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. I always, always, really, honestly, read those comments. Even if I don't respond right away, it's usually because I'm looking up the right answer for that. Unless it's a scathing comment, then I just chuck a little bit and cry a little bit. Until the next one, I'm Midwest in the Far East. Thanks for watching.